Another great messianic psalm is Psalm 8. Again, a typically messianic psalm. It begins in the Hebrew. It's about the paradox of the importance of man at creation and how the Lord has blessed man, made him a little lower <laughs> than himself, but higher than the, than the animal world, over the animal world. But its ultimate application is to Christ, who is over everything. <laughs> Notice it begins, it's a hymn of praise. Lam natseach al hagetit mizmor le David. For the leader, and lam natseach is menatseach from natsach, to be preeminent, it's a PL uh, participle. Uh, notice the mem with the shiva pathak doubling of the tzadi, the middle radical. It's a pl participle, masculine singular with the lamed prefix. So to the the leader or chief musician <coughs> al hagatit upon the gatit al is a preposition upon and gatit. We're not sure exactly what that means. Could be a musical instrument. It could be a type of melody of some sort. We're really not sure. Mizmor le David, a psalm belonging to David. Mizmor is the noun meaning psalm or song. Le David means belonging to David. The Lamed followed by the Lamed preposition followed by the proper name David or David. So we begin in verse 2. Adonai Adonainu Ma adir shimcha bechol ha'aretz. Asher tena odecha al ha'shemayim. Mipi olelim v'yonikim. I'll stop at verse 2. Adonai, uh, Adonai Adonini. O Lord, our Lord. Notice we have the vocative of address in Adonai. And Adonenu is Adon, meaning Lord, and Enu is the uh, suffix ending, first common plural. And so Adonenu would be our Lord. Ma, how adir, how glorious. Uh, notice adir is an adjective. How glorious is your shimcha, your name. Shim is a noun followed by cha, the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. The chol ha'aretz in all the earth. Be is the preposition in. Chol means all. Uh, and then ha'aretz, the definite article ha, followed by the noun aretz or earth from eretz. So how marvelous is your name in the totality of the earth? Asher tena odecha al hashemayim, whose praise give above the heavens. This is a difficult uh, section. Asher is a relative pronoun. Tena is debated. Uh, it can mean something like rehearse, whose praise is rehearsed. However, it could also, in the way it's pointed, be from uh, Natan, and it could be an, an imperative, second masculine singular, from uh, Natan, so whose praise give. In other words, who's your praise? Hod means praise, and notice, uh, or uh, majesty, or praise, ha is the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. So, whose majesty or praise is either rehearsed or we could render it as an imperative give upon or above the heavens. If it's upon, it could be the heavens are called to praise the Lord with all of the brilliancy of the stars and the sun and the moon. Or it could be above the heavens, uh, where the angels are called to praise the Lord. Al can mean upon or above, the preposition. And then ha shemayim is the definite article in ha, and the, <coughs> the noun in shemayim, meaning heavens. 
so whose praise is rehearsed above the heavens or upon the heavens. And then we go on, not only looking at the the angels praising the Lord or calling for them to praise Him above the heavens or calling for the heavens to praise Him, we move on to verse 3, Mepi olelin v'yonikim yesata oz lama an zororecha lehashbit oyev umitnakim. From the mouth of babies and sucklings you have established strength for the sake of your adversaries to bring to silence the enemy and the avenger. Notice the mem here is the preposition from the noon has assimilated in the in the uh, the fi uh, in the uh, in the dog in the, in the the with the dogish forte in the fi so uh, men p fi becoming the p uh, and notice the e the hitric yod is the first common singular pronominal suffix so from the mouths of babies o lalim here we have a participle, cal participle, <coughs> masculine plural, from uh, olal or alal. So from those who are babies, who are and sucklings, those who are giving suck, the or taking suck, the young little ones. Notice yanak means to suck, and the o class vowel again indicating a participial construction. And sucklings, and the eem shows the masculine plural ending. So from babes and sucklings, yasata oz, you have established strength. Notice yasata is from yasat to establish. It's a pl perfect third or second masculine singular with the ta suffix <coughs> from yasat. You have established oz or strength, the noun oz. And so Innocent little babies begin to speak and utter language, and God's strength is seen in the human creation. Or, from simple people, God establishes His praise. Like in Matthew 21, those who were simple folk were praising the Lord and elevating His name. And Jesus quotes this very text to drive home the message that simple people and their praise of him provide a bulwark, a praise for the Lord. And then he goes on, the ma'an zororecha, for the sake of your adversaries. The ma'an, for the sake of, preposition followed by zororecha from sarar, to, to be an adversary. Notice we have a cal active participle, masculine plural, followed by ha, the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. So, for the sake of those who are at your adversaries, lehashpit oyevu mitnakim, to bring to silence. Notice the Shabbat is the word to to bring to silence. And notice here the he prefix with the a class vowel, followed by the I class thematic vowel in the Hirik Yod, preceded by the Lamed, shows that we are looking at a Hifio infinitive construct to bring to silence Oyev, the enemy. Here we have another participle, cal active participle, with an O vowel followed by a Tzadri, the one who is the enemy and the avenger. U is the conjunction, and uh, notice the Mim means uh, mit nakim is showing that we're looking at a participle that is a <laughs> hit payel uh, participle sorry, nominative uh, hit payel participle masculine singular from nakam and uh, to bring to silence the enemy and the one who avenges the avenger from not come to avenge. So we're looking at a hit payel participle masculine singular from not come. So 
God establishes his strength through simple folk, through babies, or through simple people, uh, they provide a bulwark to bring to silence his enemies, and the one uh, avenging, he then, is the one who will avenge and judge evil someday. And so this uh, shows that his strength is seen to be able to do that uh, in the future. And even, you know, to judge situations now as the ruling sovereign, speaking of the Lord, speaking of the Lord. And he then goes on to talk about not only his greatness in human creation, but his greatness in the creation of the heavens. Notice he says in verse 4, Ki reshamecha ma'ase etzbeutecha yarecha v'chochavim asher konanta. When I see your heavens, <coughs> the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have made. Notice the key is the conjunction in ere is from ra'a <coughs> to see a cow imperfect first person singular from ra'a when I see your heavens sham shame shamecha would be your heavens notice shame is plural and ha the noun plural is your pronominal suffix second masculine uh, Singular. So when I see your heavens, ma'ase etzbeotecha, the work of your fingers. Notice ma'ase is work, and it's in construct, the noun in construct with etzbeotecha. Etzba means finger, and ot means a plural, feminine plural that's in construct with the segol yod, with the cha, the pronominal suffix, second masculine uh, singular. So when I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, finger work is yarecha, v'chochavim, asher konanta, the moon and the stars which you have made. Notice yarecha is the noun meaning moon. Ve is the conjunction followed by the plural noun kochavim, kochavim, with the im ending. Kochav means star, so the stars which the relative pronoun konanta you have made. Notice konanta is a polel, a perfect second masculine singular from kun. Uh, in these kind of forms, you double the final syllable to make it intensive, which you have established or you have made. Konanta, polau, uh, perfect second masculine singular. So notice that the heavens are God's etzba otecha, his finger work. When he saves us, he has to get his arm involved. They tell us that the nearest galaxy is 30 million light years away, traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. In two seconds, we zip past the moon. We still have 30 million years of travel time, really at that speed, you think about it, to get to the nearest galaxy. And they tell us there must be millions of, of them out there further and further away. That's his finger work. That's light stuff for the Lord. But when he saves us, he has to bear his arm. I'm reminded of, of Isaiah 53.1, Uzzuradonai, Alminiklata, and the arm of the Lord, unto whom has it been revealed. That same uh, word, uh, Zeroah, arm, is used in Exodus 15, of God delivering his people at the Exodus. So what a beautiful picture, the stars and all the heavens. That's God's delicate work. That's his finger work as the great uh, creator. And then as we move on, he says in verse 6, Vatachasrehu me'at me'elohim. Or, or back to verse 5, I should say. Ma'anosh ki When I look at your heavens, 
What is man that you remember him? Uvenadam kitiv kadenu, or the son of man that you visit him? Uh, here we have the interrogative ma followed by anosh, which is a noun that means frail man. What is frail man? Kitiz karenu. The verb is zahar to remember uh, that the conjunction that you remember me. And notice this is a cal imperfect second masculine singular from Zahar that you remember uh, him what is man that you remember him and notice the N is a hinge N who is the original form tis karen who the he part of the who assimilated back into the noon uh, part of the hinge with a doubling uh, a doggy's forte so that accounts for the doggish forte there. So what is mere frail man that you remember him? Who venadam, or the son of man, uh, that is, who is the conjunction, venadam means son of man, again, two nouns in construct, son and man, that conjunction, tif kadenu, that you think about him, or that you visit him. But God means to think about and come to visit. And notice again, we're looking at a cal imperfect second masculine singular from pagad with the hinge an, and then an who again, where the he of the third masculine singular pronominal suffix, the he part of that has assimilated by reverse assimilation back into the noon, causing a doggish forte. So, what is mere man, frail man, that you are mindful of him, that you remember him, or the son of man that you think about him, or that you visit him? By the way, notice the beautiful alliteration in the Hebrew. The same sound. Tizkarenu, tifkadenu. This is what we call Hebrew synonymous parallelism in poetry here, and we see the beauty of it. What is man? Ma'anosh ki tiz karenu ben adam ki tif kadenu. And you hear the beauty of the Hebrew here with the same enu ending in both uh, lines. Then as we come to verse 6, what he's really saying so far is when you think of the stars and the vastness of the universe, what is mere man that you give us the time of day? That's the thought that the psalmist is making, yet you've made him a little lower than the angels. Notice the next verse in verse 6. Vatehasrehu me'at me'elohim v'chavod v'hadar te'atrehu Yet you've made him a little lower than... Now we could translate this as angels or God. We'll talk about that in just a second. And you've crowned him with glory and honor. First, uh, notice the, the vav here is a vav hafik. And what we have here is chasar to make lower. And notice we have a shiva pathak with a tab prefix. So we're looking at a <coughs> pl imperfect Second masculine singular with a pronominal suffix, third masculine singular in the who, and a vav conversive or a vav consecutive. So, and yet you have made him. So it's not futuristic because of the vav consecutive, but it's put into the past. Yet you have made him a little lower, may ought. Here's a, compar to a comparison. A little lower than uh, ma'at is a little bit, uh, an, an adverb. And here we have a comparative use of the mem. Then God. Notice mem here. Men could not, the noon could not assimilate into the olive, so it dropped out. Then we have compensatory lengthening from a hirik to a tseri. So you have made him a little lower or a little less than either God or angels. 
Elohim normally means God, looking at his transcendence. We take it that way, it would mean you have made man a little lower than God. But in some ways, you would expect you've made him a little lower than uh, yourself. Something like that. Uh, So the Septuagint understood this to be angels, malachim, uh, or uh, angelos. Uh, You've made him a little lower than angelus, than angels. And that's the way it will be used again in the New Testament. So either way, man's dignity is seen, that he's right below God in being over the animal world on this earth, He's sort of like God's viceroy to be, uh, can I say, ruling over the animals or right under the angels, depending on how we understand Elohim. The chavod v'hadar te'adrehu And you have crowned him with glory and honor. And with glory, ve is the conjunction followed by the noun chavod, meaning glory. And again the conjunction with glory and honor. Hadar meaning honor. Two nouns showing the dignity of man. You have te'atrehu. You have crowned him. Again, notice atar is the root to crown. We have a shiva followed by a pathak, doubling of the tet. And so you have crowned him. In other words, uh, pl imperfect, second masculine singular, followed by who, the pronominal suffix, third masculine singular. So you have crowned him with glory and honor. We're looking at the dignity of man, right under angels, or right under God, and how he's crowned with that dignity. Then as we move on, in verse 7, it says, Tam shilehu, you caused him to have dominion over the works of your hands. All things you have placed under his feet. Notice the tamshilehu is from the root mashal, to rule. And here we have a hifil, imperfect, second masculine singular from mashal followed by a pronominal suffix third masculine singular notice the ai vowel pattern indic- indicative of the hifil imperfect so you have caused him to rule over the works of your hands the bet will appear with mashal meaning to rule over and notice ma maase is from ma'asa, now it's in the plural with the tzeriyod. It's a plural noun in construct with yadecha. So you've caused him to have dominion or to rule over the works of your hands. And again, yad is the noun meaning hand, and yade is that noun in its plural. It's a, it's a plural construct now, noun in construct with ha. So you have caused him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Everything. Kol, an adjective. All things. Shata, you have placed. Notice shata is a middle week verb, sheet, meaning to, to place. A uh, hirik yod, middle week verb. Here it is a cow perfect, second masculine singular from sheep. So you have placed all things tachat raglav under his feet. Under is the preposition. Regal is the noun for for foot. And notice raglav puts it into the plural in construct with the vav here. Raglai becoming the the feet of him, speaking of man, with the pronominal suffix in the vav, third masculine singular. So you placed all things under his feet. Notice the dominion of man over the animal world. So he names the animals. So ne, 
באלפים כולם וגם בהמות שדי. שיפ and oxen, all of them. So נה is a noun meaning sheep. אלפים, it's a, it's a collective singular. But אלפים and with the conjunction and אלפים, אלף means oxen, but אלפים is the plural, oxen with the em ending, masculine plural. So the sheep and the oxen, כולם, all of them. כול means all, and am is the pronominal suffix, second, <coughs> excuse me, third plural, pronominal suffix. So sheep and oxen, all of them. The gum and also Bahamot Sadai, the beasts of the field. Behema is the word for a domesticated animal, and Bahamot are the domesticated animals with the oat ending of the field, Sadai. Sadai is a noun meaning field. So, indeed, uh, man has been given the dignity over the domesticated beasts of the field. And furthermore, over the birds of the heaven. Notice, Sipur Shamayim, Udige Hayam, Over Orachot Yamim. The fowl, or the birds, the fowl of the heavens. Notice, Sipur is a collective noun, singular, masculine. And Shamayim, it's in construct with the dual form of heaven. So over the the fowl of the heavens and the fish of the sea. Who is the conjunction and dog is the noun meaning fish and in the plural it's dege, masculine plural uh, in construct with hayam over the fish of the sea. Ha is the definite article and yam is the noun that means sea. So notice man's dignity is a wonderful thing. His preeminence, his spiritual preeminence. He was created in the image of God. We're thinking back to Genesis chapter 2 and the dignity of man at his creation. And so he concludes and says, Adonai Adonainu Ma Adir Shemcha Bechol Ha'aretz. A repetition of, the, of verse 2. O Lord, our Lord. Again, Adonainu is our Lord with the suffix, first common plural pronominal suffix. O Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name. Shemcha bechol ha'aretz. Again, notice uh, how glorious is your name. Shemcha is the noun shem followed by the ha the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular, bechol ha'aretz, in all the earth, as we've seen in verse uh, 2. Uh, we've seen the same great teaching uh, above. So basically, this text, or this song, takes us back to Genesis and the dignity of mankind over all of creation. Man is created in the image of God. He's a speaking being, as the Targum renders it. And so we see the human dignity of mankind. And yet isn't it tragic the way humans treat one another and how they often mistreat one another and treat each other worse than they would treat their animals often. And so this is a great text that reminds us of the dignity of every human being. As we come to the New Testament, this great text now is applied to Jesus in a messianic application to Him. And in the book of Hebrews, the writer is seeking in Hebrews chapter 2 to show the superiority of Christ over angels. And in the midst of that argument in chapters 1 and 2, we pick up in verse 5 these words. <laughs> For not to the angels did he subject 
the world about to be inhabited or the inhabit the world about to be inhabited uh, concerning which we are speaking uh, notice he says but someone testified a certain one testified somewhere saying what is man that you remember him or the son of man that you visit him and yet you have made him a little lower than the angels. There we have Angelus from the Septuagint. You have crowned him with glory and honor, and you have placed all things under his feet. Notice the application that the writer of Hebrews makes those, uh, though to this. For in subjecting all things, he has left nothing that is not subjected. But we do not yet see all things subjected. If we look at mankind, we don't see every last thing subjected. However, we do see everything subjected to Jesus. So the writer goes on and says, But we see Jesus on account of the suffering of death, having been made a little lower than the angels. In other words, Jesus became flesh, the perfect God-man, was made a little lower than the angels on account of the suffering of death, now we see him crowned with glory and honor. We see him above the angels, crowned with the highest type of glory and honor. But he was made a little bit lower in the incarnation that by the grace of God he might taste death on behalf of all. So now Jesus is exalted. (coughs) <coughs> above angels, having become our pathfinder, having tasted death on our behalf. And the writer goes on to drive that point home when he says, for it was fitting for him, <coughs> on account of whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory to perfect the archegon, the pathfinder of their salvation through suffering. Jesus is our great pathfinder. He has cut the way through the thicket of death. He goes on to say, for the one who sanctifies, which is Christ, who sets us apart for glory, and the ones who are being sanctified, who are being set apart for glory, are all of one. We're one with Him in that destiny, having joined with the victory of our archegon, of our pathfinder, <coughs> on account of which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, and we've seen this text early when we looked at, at one time when we looked at Psalm 22, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Looking at the resurrection of Christ, after his prayer upon the cross, how we're one with him now, And he's declared that victory to the apostles and to us after the resurrection. And again, I will be confident in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God has given to me. Isaiah here is quoted in Isaiah 8. He becomes a type of the Lord Jesus and his children, a type of us as believers that are one now with him as Isaiah and his children were those who were looking forward to the deliverance from judgment that was to come, so now we have that victory except in a spiritual sense through our pathfinder, through the resurrected Lord, who was made a little lower as the second Adam than angels in becoming man and yet perfect man who knew no sin, he was sinless, and as the God-man has now conquered death and is at the right hand of the Father, above all things, above all angels. So he goes on to say, as he applies it to his readers, to encourage them to go on with Christ, rather than going back to angelic worship. Therefore, since the children have participated in blood and flesh, he likewise partook of the same. That is, Jesus became human, in order that through death, he might void the one who is having the power of death, that is the devil, that he might defeat the devil who had the power of death and might reconcile them as many as were in the fear of death continually and were liable to that bondage while they were living. 
For not, of course, is he helping angels, but he is helping the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, he ought, according, he had to, according to, and he did, according to all things, to be made like to his brethren, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest with reference to the things of God, to make satisfaction for the sins of the people. He's now our resurrected high priest. He knows our infirmities. He knows our weaknesses. He became human and yet without sin. But he felt our pain and, and our sorrow and things that we go through in life. So he's able to be a merciful high priest. And he has suffered being tested. So he's able to help those who are tested. So the writer of Hebrews applies Psalm 8 to Jesus as the second Adam who became flesh and as the perfect God-man suffered and became our perfect pathfinder, cutting the way through the thicket of death, defeating death, that uh, enemy that we were always in bondage to and fear of that he has conquered now by what he has accomplished through his tasting death for us that we might by the grace of God be reunite or be united with him in victory i remember when i was in high school i played basketball this was back in the 50s late 50s and when we would come out of practice often we would walk by the gates of our high school and back then uh, the hoods would be those who smoked cigarettes outside of the walls or the gate I should say of the high school that we went to they would wear leather jackets and they would smoke their cigarettes and one night after basketball practice we came by and they were still there and the hood said hey, do you guys want to rumble? And what that meant was, do you want to fight, have a fight? And one of the fellows on the team said, yes, we'll be back in an hour. We'll meet you back here at five. And I thought, what in the world is he saying? I mean, the hoods, you don't mess with the hoods. The hoods are, that, well, that you just, you just don't do that. So we went to a hamburger place, got our hamburger, and I said, what are you doing? And this uh, fellow ball player said, don't worry, I'm going to call my brother. Now his brother was about 21 at the time, 22. He was what we called the Fonzie of the Linda McKinley High School, where we went to high school. And uh, nobody, everybody was knew who he was. He was sort of like that movie, The Fonzie. And even in the winter time, he would wear sunglasses and draw, he would always drive this car that was so, that was quite a souped up kind of a car. And so this fella athlete called his brother and said, the hoods want to meet us at five o'clock for a rumble. And he said, no problem, I'll be there. So we're waiting and we're terrified as we're looking at the hoods still smoking their cigarettes outside of the uh gate of the high school, all of a sudden, Mr. Hollywood comes driving up in his souped up car, he got out, put on his sunglasses, and began to walk in front of us. An amazing thing happened. We were afraid, but he was our pathfinder, and when the hoods saw Mr. Hollywood, there was no rumble that afternoon. They all just began to disperse and left and Mr. Hollywood when they saw him we were behind him it there was no rumble as I thought about uh, the Lord Jesus I'm not trying to compare him to Mr. Hollywood or the Fonzie at that time but Jesus has cut the way through the thicket of death we basically look at death and we can become afraid it's quite hoodie so to speak but the good news is Jesus has gone in front of us 
and he's leading us back to his eternal home, back to our eternal home with him. And he has cut the way through the thicket of death. And as we line up behind him, even though it can look very fearful, we know that he has conquered it. And that's why he became a little lower than the angels, in order that he might become our perfect pathfinder and victor over death itself as we have our faith in him. And so we can go forward knowing that we have one who is greater than the angels, who has subjected all things under himself, but was willing to become our great high priest and willing to give us that victory in our unitedness with him as we look forward to being with him throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ, the God-man, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who became God in the flesh and became our great Archegon, our great pioneer, our great pathfinder, who's bringing us into glory through our faith in him as Lord and divine Savior.